Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is a uh, review of Punisher the Platoon. Now, um, I'm not going to bury the lead. I love this comic. In fact, I loved pretty much every part of it. Um, I'm a Marine grunt, I uh, served in Iraq, and then I got into the Army, and I served in Af Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm not old enough to have served in Vietnam, but uh, this uh, book rang very very true so um <laughs> what i mostly know about this besides just hearing about it a couple weeks ago was uh, i know captain cummings said it was really boring a lot of people were kind of uh, bent out of shape about some uh, uh america was never great type of comments uh in the beginning scene but um this whole thing's legit garth ennis is a, a irishman i believe but he has a deep abiding respectful uh, but non-worshipful in, non interest in war and military. So uh, this came off as a guy who read a lot, talked to people, and had a uh, sincere interest to tell a, an important story, and I was very, very happy with it. So s to start off, we got this pretty cool cover. Um, we got you know, the Punisher symbol and then Frank uh, in Vietnam. I believe this is his first tour, they said, which would put him, depending on some uh, uh, circumstances, probably about 20 to 22 years old. So, you know, he's a big guy, and that's one of, <laughs> one of the points is made is that he's huge. There actually tend to not be very many huge guys in the infantry. When you're a giant weightlifter-looking dude, you get about 50 meters into the jungle, and then you're a heat casualty like that. That was consistently. All of our guys who looked like 1980s action heroes ended up getting uh, evac'd. And this is in training and then wartime, they, they didn't even go. So we're cutting to some, you know, bar and uh, uh, somebody is interviewing the, the four remaining members of uh, his platoon from 1968, I believe it was. And it's a pretty interesting conversation. Um, it's shot from the point of view of the person interviewing. There's some back and forth. Some of the people are really into being interviewed. Some of them aren't. Um, we get some good uh, uh, back and forth. They definitely seem like real people, uh, like vets. Um, uh, and uh, so I think Garth Ennis's research and his personal interactions with veterans has really helped inform this. Uh, so we cut to this is and this is the kind of stuff I love. So. Captain Cummings was saying he didn't like it because there was not a lot of action. and But he was saying other people were telling him it's a pacing thing. And it, it absolutely is a pacing thing. The, like I said, I haven't been to Vietnam. <laughs> I'm not old enough. But there's a lot of, you know, you don't, you don't fly like straight into war into like a big conflagration. Um, you're going to get to some... This all seemed very real. So this is um, Second Lieutenant Castle... It's the, uh, the youngest or the s lowest rank of officer. So just real brief for people who, who don't know. There's uh, two tiers. Well, there's actually three, but I'll just talk about two of them. There's enlisted. And all you need is basically a, a high school degree, high school diploma. Um, and then you rise from uh, private to sergeant major. Then there's officer, which generally requires a four-year bachelor's degree. And then you rise from second lieutenant to general. Now, um, you can go, you can skip up. There's different ways to get it, but it's basically a two-tier system. There's warrant officers and stuff like that. The interesting thing is that a second lieutenant will come out of, um, for this one, it would have been uh, OCS, and uh, then it would have been, uh, I believe, Infantry Officer Basic School. I was enlisted, so I didn't do any of this officer stuff. So he's got about six plus months of training and he's expected to be in charge of these people who have you know upwards of 2 to 20 years of experience so it's a very tetchy situation for second lieutenants um, there's a lot of uh, I wouldn't say they're hated but they're, they're, they are looked at cockeyed because it's a very kind of weird upside down system the least experienced the most trained person gets um, uh, 
in charge of the most experienced people. Um, so there's always a big uh, shakedown. Or, you know, it's not, it's not obvious, but a new lieutenant is really getting checked out by all of his, uh, all the people in the platoon he's leading. So he gets in, and he's actually got a really good attitude. These are the good officers. A lot of people come out, you know, uh, uh, second lieutenants, you got to be real confident, especially in the Marines. The Marines is almost kind of like one of those reality game shows. And it's the same thing with Rangers. Other candidates, they'll actually do peer reviews, and you can get kicked out. Like, you can pass all of the stuff in, uh, you know, uh, a Marine officer training and not get your commission because basically people say, Oh, he, you know, when the instructors aren't around, he doesn't work. He backsteps people. We don't trust him. They're like, all right, you're out. But what happens is a lot of them come out and they're real cocky. And that's a problem. So we see that he's got this quiet reserve and open honesty that is very endearing to an infantry platoon. So he basically comes up, you know, very businesslike. He's like, um, uh, they give him the option to not go on uh, a patrol that's going out the next morning. You're just... You're just here. You don't have all your gear. They're going out. That's fine. You don't have to go. He's like, no, I'm going. And then, uh, you know, he's like, uh, I can understand if you're not, if you weren't in the military, you weren't in the infantry, this might seem boring, but this was like really like this. I've seen this happen so many times. It's very interesting. So you can see that he was a good leader because he came in, you know, he basically said, uh, uh, you know, I'm new here. They say, how much experience you got? He says, zero. I'm relying on you to show, <coughs> show me the ropes. This attitude typically goes very, very well, uh, especially if the, the LT relies on his platoon sergeant. So um, we get this guy. I think he said, they, so he's, I think he's just an E5 sergeant. Uh, typically, it would be a staff sergeant, but they mentioned that they're understaffed. They're kind of at the end of the supply line, so they don't really get much. And, um, but things are fairly calm. There's been a couple of attacks, kind of like a probing attacks. And, uh, so, uh, they got a lot of, they got like a regiment, uh, active patrol going out there, but they really haven't seen much. So stuff like here, which is, you know, you're getting ready to, uh, go on the patrol. Everyone's checking their gear, loading up. You're about to get a brief. This is all very realistic. Um, the only thing that's a little weird to me is everyone kind of looks like they're 30. <laughs> 30 or more. Whereas everyone in this thing, they would be like 18 to like 26. So everyone kind of looked a little too old, but that's a that's a classic thing. So, so they're going out, they're talking about all the things they have on station. And uh, uh, some of the guys are really... Oh, I forgot I got to skip pages. So yeah, so okay, so I skipped a couple pages. They're coming up, there's a... There's a they're basically being told that they can evac, and there's this big, broad plane. Uh, to which uh, Frank looks at it and calls in uh, close air support to uh, drop some bombs, basically annihilate the village overlooking the empty plane, to which the, uh, <laughs> the people in his platoon are very shocked and impressed because they had been talking earlier about uh, how much they like calling in like arc lights and things like that. Um, so then we see that there actually were some bad guys in there. There actually was a trap. And uh, there's this interesting thing where uh, they say uh, four people were killed. We always double the body count. And then uh, from what I read about um, Vietnam, body count was a big deal. That was like mission success. That really didn't ever happen to us. It was more like go to a place, you got it, report in, you're good. Okay, you secured that objective. Um, but this is a very different type of war than the one I was in. So um, then it, uh, Frank does something interesting. He says, uh, don't say eight people were killed, say two. So you, you're not exactly sure what his plan is, but you, you, you hear these gears turning. You're like, he's a, uh, he has a deep reserve of uh, strength and intelligence. That's one of the things I liked. They make a point that he's a huge guy. He does seem very mature for his age. I don't know if they still do the thing where he was in the seminary, when I first started reading, they, they did a thing where he was going through the seminary to become a priest and he decided not to do it. But um, this thing where they're kind of on his on his side, it reminded me of something that happened. When we were in, we were in Afghanistan, we had this second lieutenant I nicknamed Captain America. And it was a roast. <laughs> he looked like Captain America. 
He was very nice like Cap Captain America, but he was way too nice. He was trying to make friends with everyone. And basically, uh, the locals would just laugh right at his face, and he would take that as, like, good-natured. And it was, they were just laughing. He, he would talk to some, you know, uh, uh, local, and then um, <laughs> he would tell the Terp, say, tell him I think he's a very interesting person. And the Terp would just look at him like, what? <laughs> like, this isn't how we talk to each other. So he ended up um, doing his time there and getting rotated out. And like I said, this guy looked like an action figure. He went to, uh, I think he was like a comm uh, officer, but he got he got a infantry um, rotation, which is good for the career and everything. He did a good job. I'm not saying he was bad. He just had a certain attitude where it was kind of, we used to get hit a lot. IEDs all the time. And uh, now luckily we had these things called MRAPs, which had like a V-shaped hole. So after like an incident at the beginning, we were, we were fine. Um... But it was just one of those things where, obviously, we're not being respected if we're getting hit all the time. Because they're getting away with impunity. That's why I was talking about in the G. Willow Wilson thing. She was basically, you know, talking down about drones. Drones helped us immensely. So, then we got this re replacement. And this guy looked like, he literally looked like a vulture. He had that, that, you know when people have that really bad posture and they get that neck that shapes like a vulture neck? He was skinny, weedy. Kind of had a little weird, quiet voice. We're like, oh, geez. We just got rid of Captain America. You know, he did his time. We didn't get rid of him. He just finished his assignment. Um, and now we got this nerd. And so, uh, what was the deal? We found a cache, a huge cache of weapons in a Carez, which is a little underground tunnel, right by this guy's house. Now, everyone would say, <laughs> they would always say, oh, I didn't see anything. I don't know anything. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know anything. Um, but, like, you live in a giant empty area. You're the one hut around here. You saw something. So, um, uh, <laughs> the tur or the, the second LT who had barely talked to us, and I think this was our first, um, uh, mission. And it, that means not just a regular patrol and come back at night. Like, we left for a couple of days. We went to Zari Panjwe. Um, and, uh, so he takes out his phone. <laughs> And he looks at the Terp and he goes, I want you to say everything I say word for word. So the Terps, the Terps were cool, but they were kind of like wheeler dealers. You would say something, then they would interpret it and put their own spin on it, you know, with local flavor. And uh, so he, 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 he takes up the, you know, uh, he, he takes out the handset for the radio and he goes, tell him if he doesn't tell us who put this here. I'm going to call in close air support and I'm going to blow this entire uh, area up. And the look on the Terp's face was just like, <gasps> now he wasn't really going to do it. <laughs> we were on a big, it was like a regimental operation. We, these type of things didn't happen. We did everything by the book. But, uh, so the, the Terp started saying like a nicey nice version of like you could tell from the hand gestures it was like and then the uh, LT stopped and he said stop tell him what I said word for word ah suddenly the guy oh I, I just remembered I saw something so that guy after he did that we loved him and we had a great time we stopped getting hit so much um, and it was very like professional like it wasn't like you know bad actions going on but it's just we established a presence. It's like the old way is gone. This is the new way. All of a sudden we're getting intel. All of a sudden we're not getting hit every freaking time we leave the wire. So it was good. So this, uh, even though the LT didn't look like Frank, he had that kind of like a calm, steely reserve. There's this, there's a saying I've heard. Have you ever been so angry that you're calm? So it kind of reminded me. Then we were kind of set up for the um, the. Uh, future issues um this is some good stuff uh and uh this is the only thing that killed me i'm looking at the credits i was like oh what a perfect book right there in midder chip sidersky how to draw variant cover no <laughs> get this guy out of here i do not want to see his name in the credits in the next issue so anyway um this book i understand why captain cummings didn't like it and actually i would understand if Anyone didn't like it. But I'm telling you, this is an important issue. 
it sets up the in the present day story about whoever this is interviewing the last four remaining members of uh, Frank's first platoon he commanded. We get to see his first mission, and we get to see, you know it sets up the subplot with the the um, what was it uh, North Vietnamese. Uh, military. I'm actually not really an expert on Vietnam War. I haven't read a lot about it. Um, but uh, this is very real. It's very true to life. The, the, the aspects of Marine grunt life rung true. The only thing that was weird was right here when he says, uh, it's a little out of focus, you're the only members of 4th Platoon, Kilo Company, 3rd Battalion of the 26th Marine Regiment. I've never heard of a fourth platoon, but I, like I said, I haven't been in forever. It was always, you would have like three um, base rifle platoons, and then you would have weapons platoon. And I know in weapons company, then they would separate it by like mortars, anti-tank, and those were mounted, but I've never heard of a fourth platoon. You have a headquarters platoon, you have a weapons platoon. I never heard anyone refer to it as fourth platoon. So maybe the thing is, this is a little thing. Um, uh, and actually, like, I'm not even, I'm not even a freaking uh, Vietnam expert by any stretch of the imagination. But I don't know. Does anyone have any older uh, relatives who are in Vietnam? Can you ask if you ever heard of, of uh, having a fourth platoon? I also like this Punisher skull because this is pretty close to the, the one when I was reading back in the day that... Uh, uh, Mark Texiera and Jim Lee and Will Sportatio, all of them uh, did. It's pretty close. So anyway, tell me what you think about. Oh, this is a very this is a recommend. Go buy it. And if you're like, I mean, what is the price? Three ninety nine. Yeah, go buy it because I got a good feeling about this. This thing's about to be a really good story. So weird sound. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the super chat and uh, 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 Patreon. And I'm gonna I'm about to do. I bet I tried to do a, a live stream last night and it was not working at all. But I'm about to do a live stream right after I upload this video. Thanks. Bye.